Hi. Once again, <laughs> welcome everybody. <laughs> welcome to, to a New Testament in your ear session. Um, Pastor Peter from First Amendment Three Church. I thank you once again for joining uh, and spending your precious time uh, with us. I hope uh, this uh, evening session is uh, fruitful, inspiring, and enlightening uh, in, in, in many ways. So uh, let's begin with prayer. Let's pray. God of light, God of life, we come to you uh, this evening to search uh, for the scripture as well as for meaning. So uh, invite your Holy Spirit to come and open our eyes and ears and our hearts so that uh, in our sharing, uh, we may uh, hear your voice and find the answers we've been looking for. And you touch and transform our hearts to be more faithful witnesses and disciples of Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, so um, I assume that we begin this session by sharing our thoughts on the reading we have done. So I suppose that we are supposed to read chapters 8 from 8 to 12. <laughs> That's what I heard from Pastor Jeanette. So 8 through 12. Uh, so if you have some specific passage or sto story uh, you want to share or point out, this is interesting or this I didn't know. <laughs> so feel free to share. And I, I urge you to share one at least one thing okay <laughs> so that i i decided i'm not i'm not gonna give a lecture <laughs> please please so uh uh raise your hand or speak out so that we can hear your story and 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 your take away from uh the passage or scripture Well, I'm not ready to do a particular thing, but I just have to say there is a whole lot of stories in these chapters. It's like it's pretty dense with stories. It's yes. almost too much. Right. <laughs> That's right. So. That's right. Good point. You know, there are many genres in in the bible right we have poem right or we have wisdom sayings things like that like a book of proverbs things like that or a book of job but then chunk of the bible the its genre is a story it's a narrative <laughs> and narrative is is quite complicated we have a lot to talk about and a lot to think about right good point thank you Good friend. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I agree with Jenny. There's a, a lot of stuff that kind of keeps coming, coming, coming. All the, all the miracles, many of which that we're familiar with, um, and very common. Um, but I, I went back to it. It was interesting. I was starting at, um, chapter eight. Chapter eight. All right. Uh, about uh, oh. Jesus heals the Gerasene demoniac. Okay. And, and toward the end of it, like, you know, so he, he continues his healing. And then they said that the people asked him to leave. They were seized with great fear. So yeah. it, it, it struck me differently than when you're always like, oh, Lord, and you healed me. And this is wonderful. <laughs> this is, and it's like, oh, no, go away. Go you away. are scary. <laughs> so that stuck out to me right at the beginning. I thought yeah. it was interesting. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. The thing is, it, you know, it's really interesting. We we hope to see God face to face, right? Even and this in our dream, right? We want to see God. <laughs> but the thing is, like, really, <laughs> you are facing the Creator of Universe. <laughs> You'll be terrified. <laughs> you know, Isaiah chapter six, where he encounters God in the temple, mm -hmm. and God says, like. Who can I, you know, whom should I send, right? Who, who you know, who, who will go for me, for us? And and Isaiah says, send me, right? That 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 story. 
then in Isaiah, as soon as he sees God's presence, he says what? Remember? Oh, oh to me. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, man, I'm 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 doomed. <laughs> so anyway. All right, good. Thank you. All right. Wells, please. Well, I'm uh, kind of along the comments of Jenny and Fran. I, I guess um, I've been really struck by um, what Jesus is up against. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's this part that you that I think, oh yeah, there were there was this stuff that happened, but overall, you know, people were welcoming Jesus, they were happy, you know, they were healed, the same idea. And this whole uh, idea of unbelief and adversity and people hanging on to their way of thinking and the law and all of that. I mean, I'm, uh, it's kind of a, uh, I guess it's provided me with an understanding of the journey that Jesus is going on. Uh, and it isn't pretty uh, overall. So, um, that's all. <laughs> Very good point. Very good point. Um, it's true. Yeah. Right. You want to add something to that? Was, was I'm sorry was Pat who no well I was agreeing with Jenny I mean with um, Pamela and I was also thinking the similarities with today how interesting it is to find yourself uh, to find yourself um, laid out as if as if um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to say something and I'm not getting there. Um, to find yourself explained in today's language, as 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 if it was written in the Bible, the correlation between um, what we're reading and what we're living, and how the similarity of obstacles occurs. And uh, the challenges, I might say, but I agree with Pamela that the um, what Jesus experienced was far more difficult than I realized. Mm -hmm. Right. Good point. Right. So uh, Jesus was described or portrayed uh, in the Gospels in many ways. He was called a teacher. Right, yeah. he was called the Lord, or he was called the Messiah. I mean, he has different identities, even though they all, you know, describe and explain Jesus in some way, right? But then, in Luke's gospel, is especially in Luke and Acts, Jesus was many times he was portrayed as a prophet. So, in in Acts of the Apostles. He was called by Stephen, a prophet like Moses. So who? Jesus. Was well, Stephen or Peter? Anyway, uh, Jesus was mentioned as a prophet like Moses. So Jesus is a prophet. What's the destiny of the prophet? What's what's going? To, what's what's happening at the end of the prophet's life? It ends, but people don't love don't necessarily love him at the end. Right, right. Prophet. The prophet, right. prophet gig is not. It's not. Maybe you get fame, but not fame and fortune. No, not, <laughs> at all. not at all. So, prophet, most often they get killed. Right? That's the destiny of prophets. So, what's, going, what's happening to, to Jesus at the end? He got killed. <laughs> so. Right, so he he's up up against many things. He yeah yeah, it's 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 a difficult story. All right, good, thank you, good. Lavin. Um, 
I um, look at it today. Um, if a man walked up to you and he said, hey, I'm Jesus, um, would you have to have some proof? <laughs> would you believe him right off the bat? Um, would you allow the government to come in and take him and do experiments on him? Um, how would you react mm -hmm. today? Mm -hmm. That's what I think the message is, is that mm -hmm. we have to look at our own self and That's see right. how we would react That's and right. how we, would we believe it? Would we in our hearts know that this was Jesus? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I loved chapter 11. Um, when he taught us how to pray mm -hmm. and he taught the apostles how to pray mm -hmm. and um, it was gentle mm -hmm. and um, really in a really intimate setting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I really loved that. Um, and of course, we still say that prayer today. That's right. That's right. It's an intimate prayer that we know in our heart, in our soul, in our mind. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So it, it's particularly in Luke's gospel, Jesus is busy, right? He's just going here and there, teaching and healing people, driving out demons. But in in Luke's gospel, it's in his calendar, in his in his Google calendar, he has a spot. He he goes somewhere at night and pray. And he comes back and he does his ministry. And then later he goes somewhere else and pray. He does that all the time. It's, it's deep relationship with his, with his, with his father, God, that it's so intimate, right? Thank you for that uh, comment. And do you, what, what do you think, my friends? Do you think that if Jesus shows up <laughs> with the kind of message he shared 2,000 years ago, you know, his message is quite harsh. <laughs> you know, I was reading this past, you know, it's like, Luke's gospel and was thinking it's like ah, are we really reading this I mean it's like it's Jesus again he's hardcore <laughs> he is really hardcore so so with the same message Jesus comes back and share do you think we will accept him or do you think we probably do the same thing to him what happened to him, what the, these people have done 2,000 years ago, I think we'll probably do the same thing. You just kill him and sh shut him up. What do you think? Yeah, and, and I think especially, um, I'm not sure if it was this week or last week, and um, maybe when he was um, picking the disciples or... Someone would say, oh, can I have to say goodbye to my family? I have to finish this. And it's like, no, just oh. now drop everything and come. It's like, wow, that seems a little unreasonable, honestly. <laughs> he was getting the importance of the act. <laughs> yeah, that would be hard. Yes, 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 yes. So uh, in the earlier session, you know, I, I was reading this it's it's been a while reading the bible it's like in our you know it's like regu regularly meaning it's like from chapter one to chapter 12 and things like that and i was asking it's like if okay okay right so let me ask you this do you like jesus if you like jesus raise your hand I asked the same question in the earlier session. Do you like Jesus? If you like Jesus, please like, raise your hand. I could. Thank you. Thank you. And I said, if you like Jesus, you don't know Jesus. 
because he's so ah, oh, he's extreme. He's so radical. <laughs> His standard is so high. You know, we think, think, yeah, we think God of Old Testament is harsh, but you know, Jesus in New Testament is soft, loving, and caring. You know, people say that, but then. If you really read the Bible <laughs> and really listen to what Jesus says, like, ah! mm -hmm. yeah, it, yeah, he's hardcore. <laughs> so, yeah, just think about it. Let it sink. If you like Jesus, you don't really know Jesus. <laughs> he's very demanding. You yes. know, he's on the fast track because his ministry was what, only three years. So right. he had this incredible sense of, you know, I need to be out there. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 He just lived his life and he's gone. <laughs> now he says, follow me. He needed to get the people to understand how it was to be Christ, to be God-like. Mm -hmm. He needed to get the people to understand the whole process of being God-like. Because mm -hmm. there were some things that, they didn't understand the parables. They really didn't understand the parables where we have explanations about the parables. So it makes it easier for us, mm -hmm. you know, so we wouldn't be like, what, you know, oh, I get it, you know, <laughs> give away your money and you'll get into the kingdom, you know, I got it. Right. But in the old days, giving away your riches was like death. Oh yeah. You know, they they um work so hard to get it that they looked at him like, "No, we got to get rid of this guy cuz right. he's talking <laughs> weird." <I know>. Um <laughs> Good point. Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> get little by my my well. <laughs> It was Nancy, you were talking? No, I think part of the other problem is now that they knew Jesus, they wanted to sit next to him. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have importance. Uh -huh. And he doesn't give that. Right, right, right. He says, so who, no, you're all equal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So who who is the greatest? <laughs> I'm not saying. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> right. And so it's, all that hierarchy stuff is not very important. No, no. Right, right. And and that's really a temptation in ministry, right? If something goes well, you are part of the ministry and something goes well and people, it's so easy to think to ourselves that who did it? I did it. It's a, it's a real temptation rather than saying it's to God be the glory, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Who else, please? Uh, Gwen, do you have something to share? Uh, it's like any interesting thing you you found. It's like I didn't know this. <laughs> uh, unmute yourself. I thought it was interesting that right at the beginning of chapter eight, mm -hmm. they're talking about these women supporting the disciples. Good point. Right. Um, I was totally unaware of that. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know exactly what they did to support them, if they were begging or if they already were rich or what the deal was. Mm -hmm. But I found that interesting. And then late, there was a place later on in the chapter that I've always heard these verses about um, my name is Legion. Oh. The, the pigs and all of that business. Yeah. Uh, the demons. Uh -huh. My name is Legion. Well, the I'm reading out of the message. Uh -huh. And in the message it says, my name is Mob. <laughs> so Legion must mean a big group of or which I never knew what it meant. I never knew what Legion meant. Mm -hmm. It was just always in the verses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
It's a it's a German and uh, no, not, not German Lumen Lumen military uh, term. Right, huge yes. like maybe it's like thousands. Yeah, I I had always assumed when I heard that Bible verse that my name is Legion that that's what the guy's name was. I don't think I'm probably the only person that always thought that. Mm -hmm. And uh, but because I was reading out of the message, mm -hmm. uh, which is plain English, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it said, uh, my name is Mob. Mm -hmm. That certainly sounded different to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It made me think of it differently. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Right. So Luke's gospel, if you remember, in Matt. Matthew and Luke, only two Gospels have infancy narrative, meaning stories that contains when Jesus was little, right? The birth narrative. So in Matthew's Gospel, Mary, Joseph, you know, they, they are there. But who is the main character, if you remember? Is Mary or Joseph? Matthew's Gospel. Joseph is the important figure, mm -hmm. right? Because Angel appears to Joseph and tells that it's like this lady, you need to marry her. <laughs> so Joseph is the main guy. Mm -hmm. But in Luke's gospel, my soul rejoices, you know, and, and exalt the Lord. Who sings that song? Magnificat. Who sings that? Yeah. Mary, right? It, there are many, many female characters in Luke and Acts that does important work in the ministry of Jesus' ministry as well as in early churches' uh, ministry. So I will say Luke is the advocate of female ministry. <laughs> right? So a lot of people, a lot of people, they, they were... And, and, Back then, uh, in antiquity, we say in Roman antiquity, there were some powerful um, uh, females, meaning the women with means, wealth. They supported Jesus' ministry as well as uh, Holy Church's ministry, right? So they were, they were really important. And I always say, without those ladies, women who came to the tomb and delivered the message to the apostles. Without those ladies, there wouldn't have been a Christianity at all. Right? Those ladies, they delivered a message. Without that delivery, without those women, there is no Christianity at all. Right? So if somebody says like women has no power in the church or it's like women ministers ministers are not people to call, you say it's like I'm sorry, shut up. <laughs> okay, all right, okay, all right. Uh, who else, please? Who those who don't share, haven't share, please go ahead. Well, I, I, there are so many, I mean, you know, there's a wealth of wisdom that's conveyed on, on many levels in the parables and people can get them in the way they're able to get them and mm -hmm. you can kind of grow into mm -hmm. the parable. So I, I think that's, mm -hmm. that's um, mm -hmm. a wonderful way to learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which parable, parable was quite impressive this time or inspiring this time? Can can you oh, pick one maybe so that we can talk it about? It just kept 
coming and coming. So I, I know I have to think about that. Okay. Okay. So how about since you, you mentioned parables, uh, how about the parable of the sword? The first, very first one in chapter eight. Parable of the, of the sword. So sword goes out and sowing the seeds. And then some fall on the ground or lobos and sideways, you know, sideways, they don't bear a lot of fruits, stones come out, you know, but then th those seeds fell on the good soil, they bear good fruits. What does that mean? So, have you ever experienced something like that before? One time, uh, after the worship service, some day a, a lady came up to me, uh, and she said to me, "It's like I got nothing out of your out of your sermon today." And another another lady, she was she she turned she turned back and and looked at me and said, "No, I got something." <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. Anything you want to say or share? Sometimes you hear sermon or read God's word, you feel nothing. But sometimes when you hit the bottom, when you are in need, your Soul is really searching for the answer, and God's word is really speaking to you, right? Right. So I think it's it's like our our faith journey. I don't think Jesus is talking about you know this group of people who are not gonna listen, and other groups of people who will definitely listen. Uh, I think that's really limiting this story, this, this this parable. I think we all have those moments in our life that sometimes we hear nothing clicks, <laughs> but sometimes God, God is really speaking to me. <laughs> I think in the parable of the seeds that God is part of bringing the rain mm -hmm. and the sun and all those other things. Amen on all the seeds so that we can't just talk about the seed in isolation mm -hmm. both in ourselves and in the world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that God is overall knowing Amen. Right. how to deal with it I, right. 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 thank you for pointing that out that's that's a really good point right. Right. yeah no matter what kind of circumstances we we are we have or going through right god is still there right providing all the nutrients and the and the light we need right in 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 the darkest time all right good all right okay uh lavin lavin unmute yourself please Um, I just wanted to remind everyone in um, chapter 8, verse 9, it says the purpose of the parables. Mm -hmm. Then he said, mm -hmm. then his disciples asked him what his parable meant. Right, right, right. He said to you, it mm -hmm. has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. But to others, I speak in parables so that looking, they may not perceive and listening, they may not understand. Right, right, right. So it's like he, he expects us to understand the, the meaning of these parables and to people that don't follow God. Mm -hmm. It's like in their mind mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is quite interesting right 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 right
Okay, John, thank you. Thank you, Lavin. John, go ahead. Now the, the conversation about parables, I think, is, is a very rich one. I mm -hmm. wondered for a long time why Jesus would speak in parables if he wanted people to flat out understand. Uh -huh. And I'm coming to think that maybe parables are like an unanswered question. An unexplained parable is like an unanswered question. Right. If it's compelling, you mm -hmm. keep exploring it again and again right. and finding what it might mean in your in your context. Whereas if you just had an answer, right. then it's finished. You, you, your right. curiosity is, is satisfied. You might even forget it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Good point. Right. Right. You know, the more I think about it, I the more I think to myself that Christian gospel or Christianity as a whole, even, is how to tell the stories of God's salvation. how to tell the stories of God's salvation. That's the question that we need to really wrestle with. And I think that's the heart of Christianity. Really stories, really, for us to really think about <laughs> who this God is, who manifests you know, God's self in, in, in Christ Jesus. Right. I told you I'm not going to lecture, so please <laughs> weigh in or <laughs> share what you think. So I, I I had something that I really I I not sure if I got it. It's it's the part in um, chapter eleven. Eleven. Spirit returns. Okay. Okay. Twenty four. Okay. 26, but when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, uh -huh. it, so he goes out, uh -huh. dry places, seeking rest, finding none. He says, I will return to my ho home from which I came. Uh -huh. Is that the spirit or the man? Uh -huh. When he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. Uh -huh. it, and then and he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. Right. Is this a story about don't clean your house or what? <laughs> <laughs> Not me, I'm joking, but I, I don't, I was kind of mystified by that one. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? What, what, what do you think about this parable? And, and as, as John said, there is no clear answer, <laughs> okay? Like, there is no clear answer. And Jesus doesn't really give that clear answer uh, to people. Just He just lives there. Leave it there. That's why he's a wonderful storyteller. <laughs> he just leave it there. <laughs> yeah, well, I have no idea what the, what the les lesson is from that. Well, maybe you just have to be vigilant against evil. I mean, it's like always going to be all temptations mm -hmm. um, will always be there. You know, the the way of being a Christian is, is going to be very challenging. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I, I agree. And and then I also think, well, the great thing about parables, it, it can mean things in different times in your life, too. You can... Yeah come back to it, uh, something that never resonated with you it was like all of a sudden for whatever point of time in, in your faith journey you are, it, it really clicks. Yeah, um, yeah so I, I think that's what's great rather than just being, here's what you gotta believe, here's the facts, right. Right. move on, so. Right, good. Yeah. Okay, All right. Naomi, do you have something? Right, I didn't see you. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, what struck me about parables is that um, I think that the religion that they practiced, the Jewish religion at the time of the priests and the Pharisees, 
uh, everything was pretty much prescribed from the top down. You know, these are the rules. This is how you're supposed to live your life. This is what you're supposed to eat. And this is how you're supposed to eat it. You know, and and, and it it was, they had pretty rigid rules for their everyday lives. Exactly. And what Jesus did in telling these stories is, is um, rather than coming up with these rules, mm -hmm. it's a way to reach people where they are at that time. Yeah. As he said, there are those who, who hear, but they're not listening. There's a distinction there. Mm -hmm. And and those that can see, but don't see, you know, don't understand. Right. And so parables are one way of reaching people where they are at that point in their life and how they interpret it. And yeah. so um, I'd always been told before that in order to get people to, to, um, to take what you say to heart, you can't just reach their minds. You have to reach their hearts first. And I think that's what he was doing in right. so many of, of his parables. There's a, a lesson there. Mm -hmm. um, I found it interesting that um, he chose 70 people, paired them up and sent them out and, and told them to go and heal and to meet the people and to go into their homes. But he also gave them certain rules, like be polite if they if they don't invite you in, just leave, you know, thank hey, them and leave. And, and so he, he really was um, a man of the people. And mm -hmm. I don't think that was appreciated mm -hmm. in his time. Mm -hmm. And there are times I wonder if it's appreciated in our time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So it's like very good point. Uh, Jesus said it's like for those who think they hear, they don't really hear. Those who think they see, they don't really see. You know that that theme repeats over and over again. That's actually found in in, in Isaiah, and he says it here, especially in the in the peril of the sword. And that specific verse from Isaiah is used at the end of Acts of the Apostles. But it will be look and Acts ends. So that's a pretty important theme in, in Luke's gospel and Acts of the Apostles. And those people Jesus describes are those who think they are righteous, those who think they know the Lord, those who think they are religious. Pharisees, Sadducees, right? At the time then in our time, maybe pastors like me, <laughs> I think I know, but Jesus is saying, so you don't really know. <laughs> all right, all right. Good, all right, good. So we better be careful. <laughs> we, 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 we better watch out. All right, good. All right, uh, Pat or Delphine and Mac, uh, you have not spoken yet, I think. <laughs> If you have something to share, right. feel free to share. Next week, I'll have more questions. <laughs> <laughs> I will make more notes. Okay, okay. I don't know how Pastor Jeanette uh, conducted the first session, <laughs> but, I, but I suppose that we just go around and ask questions and, and generate more conversations and discussions. All right, good. So if you can bring something to the table, that's great. You don't have to, but your input is always appreciated, right? Good. Well, don't, don't you think sometimes um, that it's just difficult to to um, figure out what something means. So right. for instance, the this verse about um, a, a demon leaving and then coming back oh. and bringing more demons with him. Right, right, right. I guess I think about that as being, you know, you could be uh, like Jesus could heal you, right. but if you don't start filling yourself with his word, then you're the same thing might happen to you again even worse or wor yeah worse worse will happen right. because yeah right. Mm -hmm. right i i agree i i i totally agree right 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 and 
and I, I made a note. It's like me cleaning the playroom for my look for Luke and Phoebe. And then when they see it's all clean, what do they do? Oh. Mm -hmm. They go back and make make a mess. <laughs> I am sorry. Yeah, that, that was my note. Worse than the one that you cleaned up. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you you all been there, been there, done that, right? <laughs> All right. Good. Okay. All right. Pat, you have something to share? I mean, you you may say, it's like, I don't know this thing. It's like, explain, Pastor Peter. That's fine, too. <laughs> well, I, I was interested to see what the format was going to be tonight. And so I, I appreciate that we are to bring more questions. And I think that will stimulate me. But I was... And I didn't do all my readings. Uh -oh. um, it's okay. I had a heavy week. Uh -huh. But um, back to what Jenny was saying, how Satan divides the house uh -huh. against itself. Uh -huh. I think the reference to house would not mean how you run your daily affairs uh -huh. versus how you run your house. Or there's the implication that the house is within your within your realm of ta daily tasks and how you handle people. Mm -hmm. And um, Satan is, is trying to attract you mm -hmm. just as, just as much as other prophecies. But mm -hmm. um, I guess that is a question, not an answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Satan's role and Satan's, is, mm -hmm. it, is there guidance? Is there some positives to seen from Satan? some in in chapter i rather in a scripture uh, luke 11 mm. the reference to satan mm -hmm. uh i don't i don't see any positive <laughs> understanding or interpretation of, of satan yeah uh, anywhere in 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 the bible and but then it's like i want to say i want to uh, say something about satan uh satan is it's a hebrew word it's a Hebrew ah. word. It's pasatan. Uh, it 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 means the accuser. It means what? The accuser. Accuser. Remember Job's story of Job. Satan mm -hmm. comes and asks God. It's like you know he he's being righteous, but he if he you test him and then you he will deny you. <laughs> So God let God give permission to Satan, you know, to torture him. Right? So um, the, the 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 character of Satan is is the one who accuses. Uh, right. So so for us to think about divide. Yes. For us really to think about something, something goes on in the church or decision is made. You don't necessarily agree with everything church, is, church makes a decision on, right? But then the last thing you 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 should do, or I will say you shouldn't do, is accusing people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's Maybe really toxic. Help them make change or help them see possibilities of change versus mm -hmm. division. Right, 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 right. So that's the... The, the the very characteristic of Satan, the accuser. Ah. Right. right. So we know we, we gossip all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we better be better be careful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Okay, it, now it's my turn to to just go. <laughs> Anything you want to share more or it's like ask ask questions other than that, I will you know, do my own thing. I promised I'm, I'm not going to lecture, <laughs> but <laughs> if it's in your floor, sure. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't have any others. Okay. All right. Then uh, how about, let's turn to uh, Luke chapter 12. The parable of the leech fool. <laughs> Right. 
Nancy, I'm sorry uh, to 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 put you on the spot, but can you explain to us? Do you know the story, right? Oh, please unmute yourself. <laughs> So I, I I suppose you know the story, right? The parable of the rich bowl. I didn't understand the last word, sorry. The parable of the rich bowl. Do you you know that story, right? I think I do, but <laughs> I'm on the greedy farmer. I'm on it's um, it starts on um, verse 13. Yeah, 13. Ah, that's where you are. Right, right, right. So can somebody give us then a summary of that story? You know, it's a Sunday school story, right? <laughs> so there was a rich man and he harvested crops, a lot of it. Then he think to himself, what? Remember? I've got so much stuff, so uh -huh. much seed. I need to just tear down all my old barns and rebuild uh -huh. lots more so that I can just sit back and enjoy my life. That's right. And then and then, and then Jesus says what? You're going to die <laughs> tonight. <laughs> and what good has all this stuff done for you? Right, right. So what's all your hoarding done for you? Right, right, right. So what do you think about this story? <laughs> I think we see it all the time today. Okay, please go ahead. <laughs> Both when it, within our own lives, uh -huh. where we try and give enough or have enough or mm -hmm. the, give the church big enough, uh -huh. better enough, or mm -hmm. whatever is enough. Mm -hmm. We're different. Mm. And we live in a society mm. of hoarding and greed, right, right, right. which point. is way back into the Ten Commandments. Uh -huh. Coveting, right? Wanting yeah. to have more, right? right. And yeah. when Jesus comes along and goes, mm. well, that's not going to work. The idea for all those people who are really good at it, mm -hmm. I think no wonder he got killed. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> he just attacked the power. That's right. That's right. 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 Yeah. That's right. Good. Right. Any thoughts? Well, I think. Go oh, ahead. go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. I think there's like a world. I think there's a world system that we are not to be part of or we're i mean we are to live we live in it but we're we're supposed to be apart from it mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now we are jesus said i am in this world but i am not of it of this world right good point pamela you were going to say yeah something? it's um uh, you know for me it's the message of love versus the message of power uh -huh. and you know power is a a big a big concept i mean uh -huh. and all that it encompasses uh -huh. um and whether that be money or all the things we do the media things like that it's well and pastor i believe you you touched on on your sermon on sunday when you when you talked about gratification mm -hmm. you know that part of us that um, gets enamored with power and and sometimes it can even mask itself as security or these other things because you get those feelings from it mm -hmm. but we are clearly uh, in the word of god in my opinion um given the truth about what it is mm -hmm. and you know as seekers um for myself, there has to be a decision of which right. which God are you going to serve, and Amen. Amen. and it's a constant um, challenge, you know, um, because of the external pressures mm. that are around us every day, and mm. 
And the anxiety of living even today um, causes us to want that shorter term gratification versus mm. seeking, um, right. seeking um, something living. beyond ourselves, right? God. Yeah, and you know, frankly, it's it's harder as we're told the way is narrow. And um, right. so yeah. um but yeah, I think that is uh, a reminder. The parable was the reminder of um those two right thank you right thank you right right anybody want to add on go ahead please uh again unmute yourself please <laughs> yes. um i thought it was interesting in uh chapter 11 um 42 about uh where he's yelling at the pharisees uh that they're keeping uh accounting books and tithing and and having so many rules and regulations mm. um but they're not helping anybody right mm. and um I don't. I guess mine might read differently because I'm in this um, uh, the message, but but it's still it's it probably says about the same thing. Mm -hmm. So they find loop holes and so on and so forth in all their regulations, mm -hmm. and they're keeping track of everybody and whether they're breaking a rule, but they're not helping anybody. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It sounds like today in many ways. Yeah, and, and Jesus was talking about. What group, which group of people? The Pharisees. Right, Pharisees and Sadducees, those religious people, mm -hmm. right? So in today, today, who? Church. I, don't know. I think of the government or the rulers of churches or the, the right. people in charge. Right, people in charge, right. right. I think of the gas people. I think of the people who um have food sell food mm -hmm. the greed in it right now um the inflation for no reason mm -hmm. um right now it's it's really not let's help the public it's more like let's get as much as we can out of this mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. and that's hurting the rest of us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Good. Thanks for your comment. Right. Okay. All right. We have five more minutes. Do you have any burning questions or something you want to add? Other than that, I will move on. <laughs> okay. So, okay. My blunt question is like, do you still like Jesus? <laughs> what changes you when you read when you were reading the scripture this time? Or it was the same. Or ask yourself, like, is this the guy I thought I I, I follow? My personal message from God through this, the word has been persevere. Mm -hmm. A personal message. I see him as a great teacher. Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. He is. And a loving one, actually. Mm -hmm. Even though he's harsh, mm -hmm. I, I believe everything he says, he says with love in his heart yes. to get us to learn yeah. our lessons. Amen. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Persevering and not to be defeated. 
Mm -hmm. Not to be defeated. And and not not to be critical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or gossip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Well, I, I just, I appreciate hearing, hearing that basic uh, message in, in the story mm -hmm. about the, the, the man coming to another man's house and they've already tucked into bed and says, <laughs> I really need some, I need some bread. I need, and it's like any, he's sort of insisting that he, he, he has a great need for this. Mm -hmm. And it just, I mean, I, it's, it's my, it's me. Something just is, it tickles my fancy, that, <laughs> but you have to look in the, um, in the new revised standard uh, to to find this one word, but it's uh, uh, I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, uh, yet because of his importunity, uh, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. Mm -hmm. It's such a wonderful word, and it's yeah. the only place I've ever seen it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And it and it comes from uh, French, and then from Latin, and it and I have this mental picture. It's 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 the port, yeah. and not getting into the port. So a a a, a ship keeps sailing in. To, to port sailing in and keeps keeps just persevering right persevering and and then and it's just such a it's just such a a wonderful word and then, but it's then you know the wonderful message right. ask and it will be given right. knock and you will find seek you will find knock you will be open to you I mean, so it's the compliment to all, all this diligent diligence that's required of us. Right, right. You know, on is seeking, right? So in today's word, I will say, you know, God doesn't say, you know, you're you're in need and you are really pray, and God doesn't say, you know, you you haven't been to church a lot, you didn't give to church a lot you didn't you were not so much involved in the church a lot in the ministry of the church a lot he, god doesn't say that <laughs> right the point is you just keep asking right you know the depth of your relationship with that friend that doesn't really matter you just keep bothering him <laughs> then it'll be given to you it, it's it really it gives us a hope <laughs> because before god no one is perfect <laughs> I just keep asking. I, I love Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we know you do. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, uh, let me, let me, it's like eight o'clock. So my conclusion is this. You know, if you really know Jesus, I said, if you cannot like him. <laughs> but here's the thing. It's difficult to like Jesus because he's so demanding. But my solution or what I found is what I realized is if you love him, if you love him, you can follow him. If you love him, you can follow him. If you like him, that's the level of commitment that you have or we have, then we just, we cannot follow him. But if you love him, for all the things he he has done for us, then we can follow. Him. So, I, that's my ending. <laughs> Unless you have something to add, <laughs> right? And really, really think about it. Really think about it. That's the answer I found. Uh, mm -hmm. If you love him, 
yeah, we can follow him. And we know the way uh, to which he, he invited us is the way of cross. And Jesus said, if you want to be my disciples, if you want to follow me, he says what? You must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. That's difficult. That's difficult. <laughs> but if we love him, we can do it. And God will give us strength to do that. All right. I think we are done. Then let me... You know, do you have something to add? Just said thank you. Oh, my That's pleasure. a nice distinction, clarification, path. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. All right. All right. Let me, let me close with prayer then. Okay, let's pray. God of grace, God of love, uh, out of your love, uh, you sent your son, Jesus, to us and show us the way who you are in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, in his harsh words, as well as in his loving sacrifice, you showed us who you are. So uh, give us strength, give us faith, so that we may continue to follow you. Not only we may like you, but also go one step further, way further, and we may love you and to truly follow you. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. It was so nice seeing you. I'll see you next Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. See you next week. Have a good night. Bye. -bye. Good night, all. Bye. -bye.